but each one was such a new beginning, a new life and a new beginning. And what is this child about, you know, and how can I best bring out the best in this little one? So uh, it just, that's how, that's how we started with an ad in the bulletin. And then of course it became, um, one learned so much about the societal problems, uh, about poverty and race and different issues that you probably would have never explored on such an intimate level without that experience. And it, it changes it changes your perspective and it changes your life. It, it, as much as you may impact a child's life, you know that they have changed yours. I remember I, holding these, about three or four of the children and not knowing this was not colic. I mean, it was, they were colic, but this was, this was trembling and shaking. I had one baby who mom was giving him um, cough medicine with codeine and he was three weeks old to make him sleep. And they picked the, the police, picked this couple and with their baby up and immediately the baby came into foster care uh, like that evening and by the next day the baby was literally climbing up my shoulder because mom had been giving him codeine mm -hmm. since he was cough medicine with codeine for about three weeks and and he was just I, I mean, was he was difficult to hold even yeah. because he mm -hmm. was so stiff and trembling that was probably the toughest day for them is probably the happiest day for me and, and it's you know it's strange because you know they get uh, you know we've seen the films in our training of what happens you know when a child is taken no matter what time of day or night you know and so their toughest day is is like my it sounds crazy but when they come up our walkway you know when the investigator calls and says you know very late at night and here's you know they'll come with their backpack and Actually, not even some kids come with a backpack. We know, and I'll share with you where that goes. But most of them are in a, a garbage bag or a box. You know. I think children are severely handicapped emotionally when they have rejection after rejection after rejection, when they're um, uh, just shunted from place to place and back to grandma and then grandma can't manage and then they're back in foster care with another foster family and i'm not saying that it's anybody's fault but it it, it just does so much damage to the children I think there's an issue in the fact that they're numbers mm -hmm. they, they're a number they're very busy and they're, they're very busy they've mm -hmm. got many cases they've got yeah. a lot of cases sure. they've got and there are a number in the system and they don't have the involvement mm -hmm. that we have Right. And yeah. the real, I mean, we, we became so involved yeah. in each of our babies. Our babies weren't foster children. They were us. our they children. They members of our oh, family. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And that's, 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 I think that's a difference that's, in, absolutely. yeah. There. there, we had one little boy who the mother had um, serious mental health issues and, uh, and for whatever reason, she, she abused the child very, very badly. Um, and there was a, her partner also abused the child and he was hospitalized as a result of the abuse for about three weeks. And then we were asked to provide the foster home. And he was a beautiful little boy, but he was almost four. He wasn't speaking. He hung his head like this all the time. But when they go from home to home, I've seen that with older children, it takes years and years of therapy and security to to make them feel secure so that they can live the life that they were intended to live. And then there was Yamin, who was three and a half, almost four, who wasn't able to walk because like you said, the foster parent must have taken him home and left him in the crib for a number of years and he didn't walk he couldn't eat a, a cookie with his hand. Um, he didn't know what to do with it. Uh, they had, Dyfus had come and pulled him out of the home immediately. Um, he was 
the filthy and covered with um, excrement. Mm. And so he came uh, to Linda again, and when we met him, he pulled himself across the floor. Uh, so he got orthotics and a lot of physical therapy, and he was started to walk and uh, talk. And um, today he was adopted by a family who uh, had his brother, had an older brother. So they contacted them and he went to school. He was in the preschool handicap program very, very early. And he just soared. When Linda last heard he was 12 and he was in the middle school, a star of the middle school track team. Wow. And Aww. we wow. were just <laughs> blown away, yeah. Yeah. you know. So there have been just wonderful stories with some of the children. They've just blossomed. He was the high pitch screen for three months. And all of a sudden, when he was three months old that day, it was like he became a new child. He started smiling, never stopped smiling. And he was great. <laughs> but he was one who did go to a family member. And then uh, six weeks later, I heard from a woman who said, I, are you, you know, so-and-so, and what, you know, did you have... Mm -hmm. McCarr. I said, yes. And she said, well, he's in my care now. And I said, oh, interesting. I'm so thankful she contacted mm -hmm. us. And uh, he was just a genius. Wow. Wow. Uh, at one point, he was very intelligent. Um, an amazing young man. Um, Shay and I went and picked up a little girl oh. once. Oh. And <laughs> had a doctor ask us, is it worth it for us <gasps> to treat these children? Yeah. Yeah, they and did. both Shane and I, I think both of our jaws oh were, I mean, hanging yeah. on mm -hmm. the floor. Right. Um, we couldn't believe it was coming out of the mouth of a doctor. Yeah, um, at St. Joseph's, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this baby that we picked up, that Pam was Pam's baby, that baby was in the hospital for about seven weeks, and she just cried. They, they've ne The hospital never had a baby like that, mm -hmm. you know. She just cried continually, the poor little thing, and... Uh, That's because they needed a foster mom to hold them yeah, for the first three months, it, right? Yeah. right? Which is right. Probably well, they hid me in a room, too. Yeah. They hid me away in wow. a room in yeah. case anybody showed up. Wow. Right. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then whisked me out a back door, literally, right. to get the baby into the car. But and I think maybe his point was that nobody knows the stories of the genius and nobody knows the yeah, stories right. of Yamin running. No. Do you know what I mean? Nobody... Well, I told them my story. Yeah. yeah. I said, you know, I said, I had one that was like this, that cried and Oh, cried his and eyes cried were cried. on the sides of his head. I mean, he lived literally were on his the sides of his head. His head was like... When I got him. Mm. So... He was bent, like he was this, this narrow <laughs> and about this long. And he was, he was seven, was he seven weeks old, six? Six weeks old, I think, when I got him. Um, and like I said, just never, 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 never stopped. Um, and then he became the happiest little boy yeah. in the world. He had a lot of asthma problems. We were in the hospital all the time. We were in the emergency room. We were, um, he, I mean, he was kept for days sometimes at the hospital. Um, and then he went, he was sent to a sister, and I begged them when they came to pick him up, please do not do this. Don't do this. You're doing the wrong thing. He's going to be, he's not going to stay there. She's feeding him Coca-Cola when he goes on visits. She's giving him bottles of Coca-Cola. He's coming home. He's sick. As soon as he gets home, I have to go to the emergency room. Don't do this. And then, like I say, six weeks later, I get a call from a woman who says, and she's been a wonderful mother. She it's been great that he was moved to the, to her, but uh, I was never called. They didn't say, you know, please take come him back, back and take him mm -hmm. again. Um, he was whisked to someone else, and it was it was a sad situation, but it has turned out. But this doctor, I told him the story from Mackay because I said, you know, you have no idea what these babies are going to do. Yeah, you don't you have no idea. Everybody needs a chance. Oh, yeah. I think that that's when you say what what needs to be yeah. done going forward. I think that we have to recognize that children don't have all that much time to have a stable situation to grow up in. 
and we have to look at it from the child's timetable, not necessarily from the birth parents or even the foster parents' timetable. It has to be from the child's mm -hmm. timetable. You're hurt when a child goes home. That's the, the, the hardest experience for all of us is having a child leave. Um, and I think it's, it's grace or something that allows us to, to start again with enthusiasm and energy to start, to start again.